Hi and good evening, builders and co-creators. It's been a while since I was last here with you. Sorry, I was a bit indisposed last Monday, so Mwangi had to run with this on his own. But I'm back and I'm happy to see you. I hope your building projects are going all right. And I hope um, that, you know, you can show progress. We are, um, you know, moving towards the end of the year. And it's important that when we go for that Christmas, we have the home and housewarming parties. So I hope that you are on schedule for that. Welcome to the Builders Barraza. Today we are speaking with the homeowner. But before we do so, um, perhaps um, uh, some housekeeping, you know, um, notes, as always, um, please subscribe to our page, which is Builders and Co-Creators. Soon, uh, we will be moving straight to the page. You'll be hosting this show on the page and not in the group, so do not be left behind. Kindly find it and click like. Then we have the... Um, you know, the, the YouTube channel, Builders and Co-Creators. Again, like that so that everything and anything that we post there, um, you can be notified when you post something there. The third thing is that you should look for a group on Facebook that is called Chasing the Title Deed. This is where we deal matters land and land purchase and ownership. And we're going to be having some talks there with the stakeholders in uh, the land um, acquisition or purchase. So please like that page or join that group so that you are not left behind. And then obviously our new baby called Glam My Home uh, by builders and co-creators. Please join it because soon we'll be doing a lot of interesting things there that have to do with finishing and interior decor. Um, tomorrow, before we introduce our guest, tomorrow between noon and two, we are going to have a discussion here. It's not a live broadcast like this, but we are having something that we're calling Engage. We are coming to you so that we can discuss roofing particularly. There's a lot of interest in roofing. People keep asking questions about roofing. And we discovered that a lot of people are using the iron sheet, Mabati or top roof or whatever, you know, the ones that are made with iron sheet, the corrugated iron sheet. We want to discuss those. No particular brand, but you want to discuss the uh, iron sheet. So please join us at two. I'll put up a post and then I'll ask questions and then let's engage going forward just so that we know the things that are paining us in the purchase. What, why are they, why is the purchase of Mabati or, you know, the roofing uh, so difficult? What can we do about it? What we like? And then let's engage that way. It will be one and a half hours to two. You can drop off when you have to go, but please join me at noon. Mwangi and I at noon. I will be asking questions as you respond so that we are more educated about corrugated iron sheets. Mwangi, over to you. Uh, yeah, hi guys. Welcome to Villas Baraza. Uh, I think we are going to start. Uh, I'm going to invite our guest tonight. Her name is Barbara Wanjiro. Barbara, karibu sana. To Builders Baraza. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi Builders. Hello. Hi. You're very welcome to this show, Barbara. Thank you for creating time to come and walk and, and share with us your walk uh, or your journey through to the home ownership. We already saw your house earlier today. Mwangi obviously will be sharing some pictures as we go along. But hey, Barbara, that is a beautiful house. Congratulations. Please share with us everything that you can uh, for purposes of learning so that you know we can understand. In the background is Barbara's beautiful, beautiful house. So Barbara, first of all, tell us where this house is so that we are discussing it within the context of where it is built. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, um, I come from Embu. So we are finding this house in Embu, a place called Kiritire where we grow megoka. So <laughs> if you see those megokas, that is where they come from. So the house is basically in Embu, a place called Kiritiri. Kiritiri, yes. welcome Kiritiri yes. viewers. This is a house in your village, so you can share with us some things if at all. And, and viewers, remember you can make comments on the thread as you go along and we'll sample a few. So first of all, so, so as we discuss this house, have your mind space in Meru County so that we understand if there are any procedures or anything that is unique coming from Meru. Perhaps we start, Barbara, by you telling us what procedures and approvals were required before you actually broke ground, before you actually built this house in Kiritiri. Actually, Salim, um, I don't know whether this is odd or it happens in upcountry. Uh, we did not have to go through any procedures. Ah. Uh, it's a bit remote. 
So I think uh, people build their homes in their lands. We did not grow through any procedure, any county procedure. Yeah, and, and Barbara, this is something very common, especially in the countryside, in the rural areas. But then there are rural areas that have a lot of interest. Either it is one that is near the Masai Mara, or it's one that's near the airport. Like, you know, if you build coming from Kisumu, the, the villages that are around the airport or even in Eldred, those ones usually would require some sort of approval. So guys, don't follow Barbara blindly. Has did not need any approval, but always check if you need any approvals before and check how far off you are from the, you know, from the um, railway line or the, 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 what do you call it? Or the road reserve so that your house is not flattened when the time comes. Always check. For Barbara, there was, maybe Barbara, now that your house is up, you probably may want to check if you're placed properly. <laughs> Meru has a lot of agriculture going on. Uh, Salim, it's not in Meru, it's in Embu. Embu? It's in Embu. I'm sorry, Embu, yes, not Meru. Yes, yes, yes it's yes, in Embu. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I highly doubt it's on, on the way to Chambere. I highly doubt. <laughs> no worries yeah. at all. So, Barbara, how big is the house? Uh, so, this house is a three bedroomed house. Uh, it's a master and suit. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. So with a sitting room, uh, a dining area, uh, a kitchen, and uh, two washrooms: the master and suit washroom and the common washroom. Yes, and uh, the two uh, the the two front area and back area. I don't know the the engineers uh, the builders call them. Is it push or poof or something? The push. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the porch, the front porch and the back porch. Yeah, so that's how big the house is. But the rooms are standard that's size. So the, yeah. Excellent. Tell me, tell me, Barbara, is your house complete or is there anything that is still pending? Look at that, guys. Hey, so beautiful. She's even cleaned the site, man. It's no longer a site. This is a home. Well done, Barbara. So tell us, um, um, is your house fully complete. <laughs> Sally, uh, one thing I've come to realize is that uh, a house is never going to be complete. <laughs> as far as what it's do you your mean? house. What's left? <laughs> uh, we uh, this house um we don't we have not yet put the cabinets, the the kitchen cabinets, uh, the bedroom wardrobes and uh, the doors. <laughs> the the house doesn't still have the kitchen doors, the bathroom doors and the bedroom doors. The and, inner uh, doors are not there. Yes, the inner doors are not yet there, but um uh what are they called? The the bows to put the doors were put. The frames. <laughs> the frames were put. <laughs> I, I know, I know so this is on, so funny. The reason why yeah. I ask this question, um, have you done wiring? Yes. Now, the best part is that the plumbing and the wiring was done before uh, the final, the final, what is it called? The final. The finishing on the wall. The finishing on the wall, yes. No, I get it. But do you have power yet? Yeah, we do have power there. So uh, my parents' house, is, uh, it's a, it's a three-roomed house. So we had already connected power at the homestead. So there's power at the homestead. So the electrician, actually, I don't know if you care. Actually, where my mom is standing behind is where we have our post for electricity. So mm. it went underground. The electrician mm. did it underground up to one of the walls, then uh, inside. Nice. And, and the reason I'm asking this question, guys, uh, Barbara, is because I'm about to ask you how much you have spent so far. So I know people will be like, okay, so you've spent uh, two million, for instance. Does that include what and this, you know? So Mwangi, perhaps yeah. you show us some pictures of the interior so that we see the kind of tiles that she has used, the finishing on the wall, the painting she has done, so that when I ask the question how much she has spent... <laughs> Uh, it will be relevant. See, she has already fixed the wash basins and sinks. The lady has already fitted tiles. Ah, wow. And she has this concrete um, worktop in the kitchen and she has tiled it and there is power. And I see there is a ceiling and she has done the... Look at that. This is beautiful, Barbara. Well done. So tell us, Barbara, so far, how... Is that you? 
<laughs> no, <laughs> that's <laughs> not my son. <laughs> yes. How much have you spent this far, Barbara? Wow, uh, that question, I, I had very many answers. Um, so far, we are at uh, 2.2 million. The yeah. reason I'm using the word so far is because uh, actually the last two days, I was having fundies that were removing some bowels, a septic. I've done a septic tank. Uh, a, it's called a septic tank, right? Yes. I so don't there know what you have done a septic tank or have you done a biodigester, which is which? A septic, a septic tank. Noted, yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, there are some fundies that were removing the, the bowels. They are removed after 21 days, right? And mm -hmm. now they were doing plastering. So as of today, we are at 2.2 minus that labor cost and uh, all the cement uh, that is there. So and this I includes uh, the, the area has a uh, clay soil. So it really had to be raised. It had to be raised by the hard stones. Uh, so the, the, the main, the, the major cost, I think, came from there. And um, the, the wiring, it was not, uh, we, we did not want a shady job. That's why even I was trying to explain that the, the electricity had to come and be put through underground. And uh, the plumbing had to be professionally done. We didn't want to, they come start uh Piga, piga the plaster, trying to do something. So everything was done systematically at the right time. Excellent. So guys, if you borrow from that, what Barbara is saying is to have this sort of neat finish where your wall haigongui after it has been painted or, you know, your doors are not broken through or your walls are not punctured after you finish is to plan early. If you know you will one day need water, do the planning before the finishing. If you know that you will soon get electricity or one day get electricity and now rural electrification is on, on the right track, please make provisions for those things early. That is what I'm getting from what Barbara is saying because that neat finish requires a big deal of planning. Speak with your builder. If you're using a contractor, speak with them and tell them what you need so that they can make provisions for it. Otherwise, you will be breaking through your floor or, or your walls, you know, and, and, and yeah. it's just a double cost. So planning, planning, planning is important for a neat finish. So even as you wait, you have all the infrastructural provisions in your building uh, available. Now, Barbara, of this cost of 2.2, if I were to divide your house into four, please hear me correctly because uh, I've never, I've, I haven't asked this question, you know, before. Uh, other people this question before. So there is the um, foundation, then there is a walling, then there is a roofing, then there is a finishing inside. Can you please divide for us loosely? It doesn't have to be exact, but then people mm -hmm. who are following, who are wondering, if I'm going to spend two point two eventually. How much do I need to start? People always ask that question. For you to achieve the foundation, how much did you spend about? For me to achieve the foundation, I would roughly give a figure of 400,000 to 700,000 yeah. shillings. Uh, that's because a big, that's I, a big gap, Barbara. To say, dear, is it four, or five, or seven? <laughs> <laughs> that's double. <laughs> uh, because uh, what happened is that um, the materials that came uh, did not do the the, the 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 foundation only. The materials that came went through up to lintel. I see. So the stones that you are using for for the foundation yes. are the same ones that you used to do walling. No, but the materials came the same time. So, um, yes, now how can I divide the cost? I, I, I put up materials that took me up to roofing. So the cement uh, plus the hard stones plus the endarugos plus the sands plus the hard core plus the ballast, all that took uh, plus labor up to foundation, Yes, labor up to foundation plus the materials was 700,000 shillings. I see. So yes. until the linton, you spent 700,000? No, until the foundation. 
until the foundation. Okay. okay. But then the same material took you all the way to the Linton. Linton, guys, yeah. is the ring beam. Some of you call it ring beam. Other people call it Linton. Not lintel. I've seen people say lintel. No, it is Linton. Or if you forget that word, just use the word ring beam so that we are talking properly and we're talking building jargon here properly. So for you to get to the ring beam, to the Linton, uh, Barbara, uh, help us ap approximate. Let's say a million. A million. Okay. Okay. Yes. Which then means that the walling usually, anyway, is something that you should know, builders. Walling is usually like a light part. It usually gives you a breather after the foundation in readiness for the roofing because the roofing is another heavy <laughs> one. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the roofing you will look at uh, actually one thing can the people who are selling the, the mabatis tell us that it is one meter cost it's not the whole mabati we imagine from that length to this length it is they, they sell the mabati per one meter so uh for the roofing cost you will imagine it is uh, sixty thousand a hundred thousand but we, if you want a good roofing, it will cost you because uh, the, the mbaos that you will use, the, the mabatis that you will choose, even a small house as a, as a two-roomed house we will consume more than 50,000 shillings. So you can imagine if it's a house that has all those uh, rooms that you need. So roofing Agreed. is a major step. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, what, what Barbara is saying, if I get her correctly, when you go to buy mabati, ask the length of that mabati you Kuna mabati ya 1.5 meters, kuna mabati ya 3 meters, kuna mabati. So ask the length because the length of it will determine how many pieces you buy. There, you know, those, yes, yes. Unaiza, wambiwa, you need 60. Kumbe, you need 63 meter wanu, menda kuruma 60 for one and a half meters, you know. So then that means that you have, you know, you, you, your quantities are, 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 are not proper. So always check the length of mabati. And this cost, uh, Barbara, was how much you use timber, I presume? Yes. So I how much did you cost? Would you know? Um, actually, I'm not the only sole uh, supervisor of the project. Yeah. I did this hand, hand in hand with my mother uh, because yeah. I'm currently employed in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, so she gave me an estimate of... Uh, yes, of I the just need the estimate for our members. Yes. So the bows we bought them at around seventy five thousand shillings. Uh huh. And yes. then there is the roofing, right? Yes. And then and, guys. And those bows so did not include the, the the ones that uh, the bows did not include the ones that came to be put the ceiling. So those were the bows that were put for the the mabatis only. Yes. This is true, guys. So there are two levels of bow. Just to break down what she is saying, there's a bow that takes it up, the, the roof up, you know, when you see the arc. And then there is something called blundering. Blundering or blundering? <laughs> blundering. Now, this blundering usually <laughs> is where you put it. Yeah, hey, are you the one who's shrubbing or me, Mwangi? <laughs> it's BR. Blundering. It's brandering. Yes. So brandering usually is the bow that you put before then you put the ceiling or the gypsum or, you know, whatever it is that you're putting for your inner roof to look flat. Those two pieces of things, are those two, piece, those two types of wood are different. Always check to be sure that you're getting the right one for, for, um, for the right purpose. So really, if you're saying that that then costs you, say, another 400, then we are at one point one which means that another 900 or another 1 million point one has gone into finishing and finishing here is the wiring it is the tiling it is the you know all painting and all those things so guys i'm i'm breaking this down so that you can have an idea a lot of you ask oh neil nianze how much will i need to put down higher there you have an answer you know, so you can approximate. However, I still would encourage you to speak with your builder so that they can give you proper uh, quantities uh, for your specific uh, house. Yeah. So, uh, Barbara, you've told us that um, you have not been the only project leader or project owner. Um, who really would, would you say has been uh, what really would you say has been the biggest challenge, especially in managing your project from the city? It's in Embo. You are in Nairobi. What are some of the challenges? 
Uh -huh. Let's start with the biggest challenge, trust. Yes. <laughs> trust, because uh, you're involving um, an outsider who is a, a builder, a, a, a fundi. I call him fundi. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to, you you will get two opinions if you are building away from home. You will get the fundi's opinion, and you will get your parents' opinion. Yes. So, and you will have your own opinion. Mm -hmm. So you will you will need to meet at a center and reason out correctly. So this uh, this can really go badly if you have a fundi who is a uh, monetary. Or it can go well if you have a fundi who is goal oriented. So, for example, in our case, we had a fundi who was uh, from the home area. Um, he has been doing great jobs. So he came to us and um, we we gave him the job. So he uh, what we had noted with him is that his uh, his estimations, his quotations would go perfectly well with the work that he was doing. So when it came to the biggest challenge would be um, we didn't face that much of a challenge, but we noticed that he would face a challenge with his uh, subordinates at work. He would fire um, people if they did not give him the work that he wanted. So we trusted him and he gave us the best. That is what I would sum it up. But the biggest challenge would be trust. Um, but if you get a good person, the trust challenge is solved. The second challenge would be finances. Uh, I did not build my house all at once. I did it in four phases, actually. So the first phase went up to Linton. The second phase, I did roofing. Uh, um, actually, I started building in November last year. So the, the roofing took part. And, you know, you, you cannot put the, the roofing boughs and leave them. So you have to put the roofing no. boughs, the mabatis. They go hand in hand. So when we, we had to do this, uh, this ended in December. We had done roofing between November and December. So we took a break. I had to recollect myself again in finances. And we embarked back again at March. So from March is where we did the plastering. And um, the, 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 the wiring and the plumbing happened the, roughly the same time. Then we kept it on hold again for a month. And then now we went back uh, the last two months and then everything happened those two months. I was really trying. Um, my birthday was on September. So I really, I was really wishing this would come on the exact date on September. But you see, it's still past, but um, I really feel it's still the, the right time. So no, the, the right I, time is always now, you know, when you have done it. I think you've done very well doing this in one year you know, is not easy even financially. So members, uh, Barbara built incrementally. One thing that I picked that I would like to underline is when she said that, you know, always you cannot separate iron sheet and, and the, the, the timber for roofing. So check with your builder. And the reason why we do these interviews is so that we can learn and get at least, you know, have information even when you're not ready to build. Always check with your builder at what point you can cut off your construction. So let no builder tell you, for instance, that ah, put the roofing bow and then go and look for money for iron sheet. Do not. You may buy them bow, but do not put them up because there is weather. If it's up there for longer than two weeks, my friend, and with this rain that is unpredictable, that timber will not be good enough for, you know, for, 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 for roofing anymore. So you may have to replace it because it will rot. Better still, Check the, the light gauge steel, check top frame, you know, because that one now, once it's up there, then, you know, you can relax because it does not react to weathering as fast as, as, as timber. So be careful where you break off your, your building and construction. Space it in such a way that you can finance it. And when you run out of finances, everything is safe. Nothing is rotting, yeah, on your project. Yeah, so thanks, Barbara, for sharing that, yeah. So I've seen the materials that you have used. You have used ceramic tiles. You have used some kind of paint. You have used a, a certain roofing, you know, quality, the stone and all. Do you have any regrets in your choice of material from the beginning to the end? Think about anything. Foundation. <laughs> do you have any regrets? Um, Is there anything you bought that if you were to do this again, you wouldn't buy? 
Um, any regret? Um, <laughs> trust again. <laughs> um, my fundi overquoted the 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 ceiling. Uh, so I ended up having enough ceiling to 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 put up in other two rooms. So uh, at that period of time, I, I was uh, a bit held up. So I gave them the leeway. I usually used to check every quotation and uh, every before before I authorize the payment and everything. So for this, I was like, uh, uh, so we have been doing this together with you guys up to here. You, you go by the, the ceiling. So I really regret <laughs> being a bit lenient. I should have been more tough because uh, uh, currently I do have enough ceiling to take uh, up other two rooms, uh, which which I look up to fans wise. That one should have gone into something else. And um, this is true. Yeah. So, so I was going to share, I was just going to reiterate what you're saying because I'm actually speaking to potential homeowners as I speak with you. I'm borrowing from you and just underlining it. Guys, um, yes, trust is an issue. And even if you have a builder or a fundi that has been doing a good job for you, for every stage, get an alternative quote. If you see one will cost 260000 for instance, same material in another, from another quote is 100000 There's a problem with one of those quotes, if not both. So always check. You may be very busy, but always check. You see the one moment that Barbara dropped the ball, she was given excess. And now she doesn't know what to do with excess. Barbara, what will you be doing with that silly? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know whether the, the, fundi, the fundi had a conspiracy to use that ceiling to, to, to prompt me to build again. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Well, I've put them in the house. <laughs> so yeah. I was a bit keen. The next, the next time we were buying tiles, actually, I, I had to buy tiles twice because I didn't want a replica of the ceiling. So they bought the first yeah. bunch of tiles. Uh, the, the wall tiles for the kitchen and the bathroom were a bit less. That is now the, the time we had to add. I told them we'd rather add rather than have excess. So, this is true. It's better to add than to have excess. The risk there, however, is that you can go back to the shop and the tile you bought in Meisha. So be careful. Be careful, guys. When you're buying tiles, let's say for a room, make sure that room at least is complete. Even if you're going for a second, you know, like a second buy, it should be for a different room. Roof, room, yes, just yes, in case yes. the previous roof tiles run out at the shops. Yes, Barbara? Yes. Yes, Salim, that is very important because the fundi shared the same thing. So you, as you notice that my kitchen, my kitchen wall tiles are the same as the, the washrooms. So we first bought the tiles for the ground, for, for, for the floor. Mm -hmm. So that the, ne the next batch would be for the, for the, for the walls. So the, 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 the floor uh, only remained uh, one room. And that's the same time that we went to get the, the floor for one room and for the walls of the bathrooms and the, and the kitchen. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So it's important. You see, Barbara learned her lesson with the roofing. So she went for the tiles and she, she did not have any waste. Whatever waste you're having, please let it be minimal. So organize so that every room is covered with every purchase. It's like you have a room, those tiles, Delisha. Yeah, so you'll end up having spent the same amount of money, but not with very good results. So plan properly. Get involved in your projects. Speak with your fundi. Visit your site. Don't build, unless you're in the diaspora, please do not build by with M-Pesa. You know, it does, you, you usually are, are very likely to be on the losing end. Okay, so... um. So she, Barbara here has no regrets on the choice of materials, but she has regrets on the amount that was bought, particularly for the, for the ceiling, yeah? So Barbara, when you went, let's talk about your roof. When you went to the shop, yeah? What choice of materials did you have? How did you end up choosing this? Why this, um, um, why this iron sheet uh, quality and why this color? Tell us. Wow. Uh -huh. When it comes to color, um, I had two choices of colors. I had maroon and I had gray. But then again, uh, for maroon, I was not able to afford, um, uh, is it Dumuza's, the, the, the original expensive one? Uh, 
So I, I figured out that after several years and maybe it decides to fade, it would look pathetic. So I opted to go for resin coat gray because um, I believe in terms of colors, uh, gray wouldn't look that bad after several years if, if it faded. Yeah, so the, uh, the Mabati was pertaining cost. That's why I chose the type. Uh, but the color was, I looked forward like several years, uh, imagining these things uh, start fading between 10 to years plus. And I, I had seen several houses with uh, maroon, how it turns. You don't know whether it was red, whether it was maroon. But for gray, yeah. whether gray fades, it's always gray. So, I so, see. so that was the reason. Good. Uh, so Barbara is very clear on wh why she chose what she chose. So builders, uh, what I'm saying here or what I'm getting at is know what's important for you and go look for it. You know, a lot of these shops these days or manufacturers have a software where they can actually have your house and place for you a roof on the computer with a certain color so that you say no, no red or no green or no gray or no black, whatever. But find a way to at least... Um, what do you call it? At least uh, visualize what you're going to, you know, what you're going for. Barbara's reasons were one cost, two was she visualized this house many years in and she did not want one that would be looking odd in the event that the color faded. So that's how she ended up with, uh, with the green. The type in terms of, um, of, of brand is, she says, was determined by price and price is indeed, indeed important. Okay. And, um, how about paint? What paint did you choose? And what choices did you have? Uh -huh. That's uh, another thing. Uh, the, the person who did the painting is my uncle. Uh, he has been a professional painter since time immemorial when I was young. So <laughs> that, that still happened when I was in Nairobi. They sent me their choices uh, as per every room because uh, I had to confirm everything before... Um, it is done. So they sent me the, the sitting room wall choice, color, and um, the bedrooms, the bathrooms. So one, he had given me a choice for a parrot green <laughs> color. And um, I had a hard time to, understand, to, to, to look for a parrot green. I actually had to go to the hardware to see a parrot green. And he wanted to put this parrot green on the window. Is it window sills? And it would have really, according to me, it would have really looked odd with a parrot green window seal and a gray, and a, and a gray uh, mabati. So for the color choices, um, I had to reject that and request him to send me another color choice. And uh, when he sent me the, the, the baby pink, um, my, my bedroom has a baby pink. Uh, the visitor's room has the, is it lime green? Plus my, my parents' room has a lime green bedroom uh the sitting is uh, cream white uh the kitchen is a uh, a green plus uh, the 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 two washrooms and the baby pink is on the corridor and also coming out on the posh you said posh <laughs> yes yes so for yeah. that when i saw that that color combination I was like, yeah, this, this, this can go well. Then also the, the, uh, the outside, uh, the, the wall painting outside, the, the cream white was going hand in hand with the sitting room. So yeah. I wanted simple colors, uh, but with a sense of style. That's why the, the baby pink is coming in. I see. So, so uh, members, you're hearing Barbara saying that there was a, a, there's some paint she was sent, like a parrot green for the outside part. And she considered how that would go with the gray roof. So I, I've seen some houses, even in our group, you can tell that the roof is well, is well thought out. The, the wall color is well thought out, but the combination is sort of a bit off. So always visualize. Again, visualize the effect you want for your final structure when it's done and coordinate them accordingly. It's not like fundi kikwambia weka hapo orange, utaweka na green, na nini on the outside. Please coordinate so that your house does not look like a kindergarten from outside. You need to coordinate them so well. So feel free before the paint is bought to reject. So tell them, no, 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 my roof is going to be this color. So my, you know, the wall on the outside cannot be parrot green, for instance. Yeah. So I like that you consider that, Barbara. No wonder <laughs> your house is this beautiful. A lot of considerations went to it. And I think you did really, really well. Okay. 
So um, you. you've already told us, Barbara, that you built incrementally. You built in phases, right? Yes. So um, so tell us, are there any benefits and what are the disadvantages of building incrementally? In fact, perhaps tell us what the disadvantages are. Uh -huh. um, disadvantages. Uh, um, um, I don't think I've uh, I faced any disadvantage uh, because um, I didn't have enough cash. So the advantage of building uh, partially as in slowly by slowly is that if you do not have enough cash, do not rush to the next step because you will be prompted to buy cheaper things or do shady jobs, contract shady fundies. Do each step at a time with enough money so that you can do a good job. If you feel, if you feel your pockets are a, bi a bit drained, it's okay to ask your fundie, a fundie, is this stage okay for me to pause? I need to recollect my finances back and move on forward. Because I, I remember um, if, if uh, maybe I would have been a little bit patient with the, the roofing, I would have done a better roofing, for example, by, by March or April. But it, that one is still okay. But you see now at the stage we were in, it couldn't be stopped. So I, for, for, I would advise. I advise all the builders, um, the ones that I want to start up, is if you feel this the amount you have, do not rush to want to own that home. And then later on, after several years, several months, you want to start uh, removing your tiles, putting others, you want to start repainting again, you want to start roofing again. True. You'd rather do yeah. it slowly and do a classic I, job. I agree with you, Barbara. I, you mentioned that you would have done a better roof. Tell us what you would have wanted improved on your roofing. Uh, I do believe in um, not not a better roof, a better quality for the roofing. I I, I believe ah. Dumuzaz, Dumuzaz is the best. Uh, that's my my opinion. Uh, that's the current uh, roofing that has been used in the previous house, and I think this is the 18th year, and it has not yet faded. But. I my my parents were okay. They told me that uh, <laughs> we're okay with the with the with the roofing that uh, you have chosen. It's it's okay. You don't have to stress yourself. So that's that that's one yeah. of the disadvantage. If you hurry, you can do something that you would have done better if you paused and waited. I understand. So appropriate your pocket, guys, and do the things. She's saying that, in her opinion, Dumuzas is the best. Some people will give you different different brands, which, you know, I don't know, people get advice from different places. Her source of information is that she has seen a house that was done with Dumuzas 18 years ago, and it still looks the same. If I were to choose a Celine, I would go for Top Roof because I have seen the way that it's manufactured and the guarantee there. But that is that is a story for a different day, for another day. Dumuzas is good too, I must say. But my favorite would obviously be Top Roof uh, by now. All right. So, guys, um, um, Barbara, I'm sorry. Before we go on a commercial break, tell us, what was the most complicated stage of your building? Was it the roofing? Was it fixing the doors? Was it finishing the walls? Was it the tiling? Which was the most complicated? Um, I would say the most complicated was the roofing. Uh, one thing I need you guys, the one thing I need you guys to know is that um, let your fundi do his work. Don't um, allow him to, to exceed past his expertise. Fundi will come and will want you to do your house all through the way up to up to finishing. Whereas this fundi is maybe a fundi who has ex expertise up to Linton. So what happened is that uh, my fundi wanted to do the, the roofing. So he said he had the expertise to do the roofing. And um, there was a challenge. There was a corner that we had to, to, to remove like twice, thrice. Uh, because it was not coming out the way we wanted. So we sat down and we realized that our fund is an expertise in term or is an expert in terms of uh, uh, building, uh, in terms of Mawe, Simiti, Changa. But when it comes to past there, get the, 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 the right fundy for that job. 
you may have your, your fundi, yes, he can subcontract, it's okay, but let him subcontract the right person else. Uh, because like that, that time is when you noted that he, his roofing skills were a bit low and we requested him to sub, sub, subcontract. At the end of the day, guys, it's your house. It's your choice. You're the one who will end up being with it there. So if you want a shady job, you're the one who will end up with a shady job at the end of the day. So from that point, um, the roofing, he had to supervise the, the roofing and uh, somebody else did it. Then from that point, he had to become now a super, more of a supervisor uh, because uh, the, the ceiling was done by somebody else, the painting by somebody else, the tiling by somebody else. Let, uh, let give, give each professional job to the professional person. Do not be deceived. Do not let somebody try to control over and want to do your, your, your building all the way up to the end, whereas you're not sure about the expertise. So, I, I, I tell you what, Barbara, that is extremely important. We have a lot of people who are brokers. They're not even contractors. I understand that a contractor can take a job and then they get a roofer, somebody who does tiling, you know, so that they're overall, uh, overall um, responsible, but the professionals are doing it. That's one type of person and that's okay. But then there are people, even in this group, oh, you want somebody to build for you the foundation? They can do it themselves. And Mwangi hates this. You want somebody who can do the roof? <laughs> they are there and they are doing it themselves. So it is up to you, the owner of the project, to ask them to understand, okay, so there is a walling, there is a roofing, there is the, you know, the, the finishing and all that. Which is your strong point? And what will you do about the areas where you have a gap in skill? Be very sure that the person that they're bringing on to your project is an expert at whatever it is they're coming to do. When Barbara had to change corners of, his, of her roofing, you know what that means? It's not that a lot of times once you make a hole on that mabati or you cut it a certain shape and make some angles, you cannot reuse that mabati and that is wastage. Yeah? So get a professional for every stage. Do not feel obliged to use the same builder for everything. However, there are areas that you do not want to tinker with. So for instance, plumbing. Hmm? Yeah. If you use more than two plumbers, my friends, and I'm telling you from my own experience, utalia choni. Eh? So always go for the best plumber and let them understand your project. What closes at what, what corners, what pipe made, so that you know there is when when they know when there is like a, a recurring say uh, what do you call it say uh, airlock, they know what's causing it because if you keep bringing different people, they are like clinic not clinical officers, they are like um, barbers they will always recommend something different without realizing that, you know, your project is in danger. Mwangi, do you want us to take a commercial break before we go to the last part, which is going to be much shorter than the first? So Barbara can drink some water. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Okay. We've seen a very good turnout and we've gotten some very good uh, contacts. We've enjoyed this one much more. Yeah, because I think this is a more serious expo because the people who are coming here. Guys, you're back. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome back. Guys, that message that did, was not too clear is about the, the you know, the... Mwangi, do you want to tell us about the exhibition that's coming up on the November the 5th to the 7th? Mwangi? Yes. Uh, yeah, hi, Salim. Can, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hello? Okay, uh, th that's the big five construct, Kenya, coming up uh, next month from 7th to around uh, 11th November. 
it's a it's an exhibition that brings about all the stakeholders in the construction industry if you are building if you're a builder i think that's a good opportunity for you to to attend and register also uh for professionals uh they get uh, the cpd points that uh, professional bodies like the government and also membership that professionals get so there is a lot of learning in that uh, in that exhibition and it's a good place for professionals in the group to attend so that would be all about it construction materials if you are looking for to build in future go and get see what other people are doing out there Excellent. So that's the big five construct. Uh, we are going to be flighting some flyers in the group so that you're aware. But then it's a building exhibition uh, and it's coming up in the first week of uh, November. I think it's the 7th to the 11th, um, you know, of, of November. So let's get back to Barbara so yes. that we do not lose the lady because we are about almost done. Um, Barbara, uh, do you think there are any unique challenges for women builders? And what are they? The, the challenges that are unique to women? That's a very important question, <laughs> Salin. One of the biggest challenge for women is that we, the fundies take us to be dumb, that uh, we, we do not know, uh, which is partially true and partially not true. So you will find that a, a fundi will give you a quote and think that you are supposed to say yes. You will go. You will go by that that, that quote. Um, a fundi will try do a shady job and think that uh, because you don't know how uh, uh, it's done, you will just be quiet. So one thing that uh, I've realized uh, that uh, women might face when when building is that you need to explain all in advance to the fundies that you are aware of the whole process. You're aware what needs to be done when it needs to be done. So everything that will be done should be done uh, in accordance to your agreement. So some fundies who are malicious will tend to imagine you, you don't know. They, they will tend to want you to buy things that they know they will not use in the site so that they can later on live with them. So I think for ladies, it is, it is good you do your background check it is good you know what is required. It is good you know uh, you 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 know the quotations. You don't have to go with one. You can do. You can be given a quotation. Go to three suppliers. Find out. Some fundies will agree with that with a with a hardware. Who you are kikuja hapa muzie hi hivi iye nyiko juni yangu. So you have to go to 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 like three suppliers, four suppliers. Uh, uh, be be exact on the price and all that. So one main challenge would be that before a lady embarks into building, do your background check, um, find out each stage, what does it entail? How is it supposed to be done? I even if it takes you six months, you will have learned the whole post process, then now you can embark into it. Getting into it without knowing what is happening. I've, I've seen a situation whereby a house has been plastered and painted and plumbering has not been done. And, um, then this lady is when she's asking the fundi, and how are we going to put water in the house? So the fundi imagined that uh, the, this lady did not need water in the house. I don't know how, how they imagined that. But now she was in a, in a stage where she had to go back another stage because another plastering had to be done and another painting had to be done. So you need to know which step comes first and which step comes last so that even if you, you're working along with your fundi, you are, your opinion is also important. Absolutely. Guys, what, what Barbara is really saying is get informed even before you build. Haki siwe unanza kujenga nyumba next year. Now we are, in, uh, we are approaching November. And you don't even know the price of one, three, one a foot of stone. Get informed. Ladies, let us pop into the places that we pop in to buy whatever we want to buy. But every so often, just go even to a hardware and ask the price of one tube of silicon. Last weekend, I had somebody being told a tube of silicon is 5,000 shillings. Thankfully, I was there and I was like, where? That's not the case. And you know, there are people who know, there are others who do not. The only way to know is either watch the baraza so that you are informed consistently or and pop into shops and find out. At least, you know, play with house plans, ask costs of things. And that's why usually we encourage in this group when somebody posts 
something like how much is the price of a three you know meter dumus asthma bati then we know you know you get a, an idea so one that one time if somebody tells you something outrageous then you you know your mind should tell you that something is not proper at least have some piece of information one two always compare prices across different suppliers like barbara says there are fundies who will go and say huyu akikuja hapo muuzie hivi hiyo iko juu yangu check with a place where they perhaps wouldn't go yeah and and fundies you realize that you really are on the spot eh and that is because you're the ones who are hands on in the building and construction if you do a good job you're the most trustworthy if you cheat you are the ones on the spot always barbara is there anything else and ladies wait before i go i carry on barbara is saying that the assumption is that ladies do not know that they'll be given a quote and they will say yes 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 nita mpesa shock them ladies get informed keep asking questions push back compare but gain and see how much you save i'm telling you you're going to be saving a lot 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 of money so before we get to our last question uh, perhaps uh, barbara would you tell us um what you would advise men and women who have a dream to build but who are still mark timing for whatever reason what would you tell them look into the camera your camera and talk to them <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh this question I, I don't know why Mwangi has been silent so much. Mwangi, are you still there? He is. <laughs> He has been silent so much. Mwangi? Yes, okay. I'm here and so, I'm, I'm following. Okay, please. So, um I'd really yeah. like to advise anybody who who would like to own a home that um <coughs> do not uh, rush it. Do not rush it. <coughs> it comes at its own timing but one thing you need to do is plan wisely because if you if you want to own a home you cannot own a home when you when you are associating with uh, several other things you you're planning to do so it's either you decide i'm doing this project first either you have some plots you want to buy first or it's i'm building first you, uh, because the the last thing you need is to have a, a stalled building and a halfway paid plot So for one is that yeah. if you have not yet built and you want to build it's not yet too late yeah uh, despite the age you are in uh, everything happens at its own best timing then secondly it is good you plan accordingly uh, a, a building a house um requires planning so do not uh, try and uh, associate two plots three plots uh the three plans if you do not have uh, the, the right finances so i would advise if it is building you sit down uh, accumulate your, your your finances then you decide now i'm building into building because it it will strain your pockets uh, there is nobody who has built and come forward and said ah yeah tu nilifanya na wiki mbili ama nilifanya na mwezi mmoja everybody would want uh, everybody will say that wow finally nimemaliza kujenga then um Another thing I'd like to advise uh, people when they are building is that always consider factors that affect you directly. And uh, this to mean is that do not try to copy. Do not try to copy. If your friend has built a, a five bedroom mansion it, uh, if your other friend has built a, a two bedroom house mansion it, do not compare. We will try do the same thing, it will it it will not work for you. or it it will go better for you so you should have you should have thought of your initial plan yourself so do not when it comes to building do not compare yourself to to your family members to your other friends it is an individual project it involves Keep factors that are affecting you directly uh for example um if your family is big and you're able to build a big house that's a factor that is affecting you you have a big family if if your if your family is small and you're able to 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 build a, a big house that's a factor that is affecting you but you're able to do something about it so always consider such factors consider where you, where where you're building your house look visualize like salim is saying visualize into the future 5 years down the line 10 years down the line is am i going to be comfortable living at this place or i will have to start looking at how to rent this house how to start building again at a certain place so visualizing is very important when also building 
you have to ask yourself, am I building at a controlled area? Am I building at, a, a, do I want to build a, 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 a shall go home first before I build my house first? Or do I want to build my house first before I build my shall go first? So be selfish a little, be selfish a little, consider factors that affect you directly. And in this way, you will build peacefully. Your mind will be at peace because you will know these are the things that are satisfying me directly and you will be at peace. So that's my advice to my builders and my, my, my builders want to start building, yes. Excellent, excellent. I, think, I don't think I need to add anything more. What she has reiterated is look for things that affect you directly, quit with the comparison, it is a stealer of joy. Do things that address your direct needs. I will not belabor it, I think she's very, very clear. Mwangi, do you have any questions before we close? Uh, maybe on, on the cost, I think I was following and I wanted to ask maybe the question just then off. I wanted to understand wh where did you source your materials? Like the mawe, the cement, <laughs> the mabati? Wh where did you source them? Like the location, how far away is it from, from your home? Ah, that's a that's a great question. Like uh, I said in uh, in the beginning, the house is in Embo in Kiritiri. We really have sand. Okay, so you'd be surprised that a lorry okay. of sand will go for five thousand five hundred shillings. That uh, my, my how many place. tons? <laughs> <laughs> I just know it's a big lorry. <laughs> yes. So actually, even in, in our shamba at the at the stream, there's sand. Only that I compared the cost of sending people to go carry the sand at the stream with cuts or buying a lorry. So sand, sand is literally available. But now the challenge was the 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 the, the hard stones. The hard stones we had to get in a in a quarry a past embu. But then Darugo, I had to come and fetch it from Juja. You know Juja? Mm. Yes. So I got, yeah. I, yes, I got Ndarugo from Juja. So the, the transport uh, was uh, something else because this is from Nairobi to up country. Yes. And everything, every other material was sourced from Embu town. Embu town is a, okay. uh, Kiritire is a 20 minutes drive from Embu town. So just go 20 minutes drive. You get whatever material you want uh, a day before or uh, two days before, well, when you have agreed with your fundi, then bring the materials and then the fundi come on boards and does the, the necessary. One, one thing is that um, the only materials that I kept on site readily available were, was cement, sand, ballast, hardcore. So any other material mm -hmm. was a plant, a plant thing. What do you need uh, in the next two, three weeks? Okay. And then now we purchase it. So, so uh, paint was bought a day before the painting work was done. Mabati, the same way. So apart from the common things, the cement, the sand, that those are the only things that are on site. Yeah. Okay. I, I asked that because I, I realized that at the cost of 2.2, .2, you said 2.2 .2 to actually to, to be at this stage. I think that's a very, yeah. co that's a competitive price. And in terms of yeah. Think project management, this is, this is a success, getting to this point with <laughs> 2.2 million. Yeah. Mongen, yeah. that's why context is important. But this is why we, we yeah. ask where the, where the project is, because now we realize yeah. that sand costs are like half the cost of regular, yeah. Yeah. you know, <laughs> rates. So yeah. always, always important, guys, to know where you're building, what you can source locally, what you can get from a distance, and therefore what is the transportation costs, you know? So I think that's an important question, Mwangi. Thank you for asking. So is that all? Yeah, that, that will be all. Maybe I, I just add one more thing is um, when you are, when she spoke about she used her her main fundi to actually manage her the subcontractors. I think that's a powerful uh, that's a powerful way to actually manage your building because I found I found people who have built and 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 they have to actually take. It, for each stage, they use a different fundi without actually having someone who understands your project from the day one you started. Because I've come sure. to, to see problems that arise uh, where you are at the stage of roofing and the only person who can actually help the roofer is the guy who did the foundation because the roofer needs this other guy to actually help me to get his measurements right or to get his angles right. 
Same applies to an electrician, same applies to a, a plumber, because the guy who did actually the main structure has to actually offer to enable other subcontractors to be able to perform their duties in that house. And I think that's a, that's a fantastic way you did it. Uh, this is a success. In terms of project management, I think uh, this was well executed. Congrats for that. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you so, thank you so yeah. much. I, I think I would attribute yeah. this to my mother. She, she didn't want her, her daughter's money to, to, to disappear yeah. in Ihauli. So she was so, so strict uh, together with my dad. So it yeah. was a family. You, and, yeah. You, you've well all done. done very well, Barbara, very, very well. So thank you for coming through and thank you for sharing your experience and your journey. Guys, learn from every homeowner that we speak with and optimize on the information that you have to save you money to, you know, avert all these problems that people meet. We hope that over time, your building journey would have been smoother. You would have more information. You would know what you're asking for when you go to the shops so that you're buying the right thing. So before, uh, I guess we release Barbara now. Uh, it's 9.30. Thank you for staying with us, Barbara. God bless you. And please invite us for the housewarming, right? <laughs> we shall come to Kiritiri, believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. After so we buy the dogs. <laughs> it's okay. When you're ready, when you're ready, we shall come. We shall come and we shall record it, you know. So guys, um, uh, yeah, so thank you, Barbara. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you so, so much, guys, be before we go, um, uh, I, I would like to reiterate about the online discussion we're having tomorrow at noon. We will fly something um, like a flyer just to tell you that we are starting. It, it will take about an hour, an hour and a half. We are discussing roofing, Mabati, what you want, what's important for you, what doesn't work. How come the manufacturers of Mabati make your work? through the construction easy. So join Mwangi and I tomorrow at noon for about one and a half hours. Let us thrash out all these things that have to do with Mabati and with roofing. So um, I guess we have to part ways for tonight. Um, thank you for staying with us and thank you for uh, tuning in. So once again, tune in on Monday next week. Keep building and God bless you. <laughs>